Hey guys, um, I'm back and I know I haven't posted a video in a couple of days. Um, I did uh, post <laughs> a description of my one of my meditation sessions yesterday, which was fun for me anyway. Um, and I don't know if you can see my, I do actually have my <laughs> scratches. It looks less like a hickey and more like I was attacked by a werewolf or something. But anyway, um, neither are true. Sorry about that. Um, I need to get better at this. Anyway, um, so today we're going to talk about one of my very, very, very favorite topics um, and something that I talk about with my clients all the time. And it is related to everything that we've been talking about. It's maybe a slightly different way of thinking about it. And again, a lot of this stuff, a lot of staying calm, being the mountain in the face of a storm is all about perspective. And a lot of times it's, it's, it's how you look at the storm. What do you think of the storm? Do you think of the storm as this thing that's going to destroy stuff? Or do you think of this storm as something that's going to come clean some stuff out, provide some water, create some beautiful flowers? You know, it's really about perspective, right? Um, so today is about being comfortable in the uncomfortable place or learning to work toward being more comfortable in the uncomfortable place, okay? Um, so about, oh gosh, it may even be 10 years ago now. I think it may be 10 years ago, actually, because I think James was 11 and Vivian was about seven. Um, we visited New York City. And at the time I was, um, let's just say, I don't want to say obsessed, but let's say that I did a lot of hot yoga, um, particularly in Bikram, the Bikram yoga studios. And one of the great things about it at the time, and I'll get back to him in a minute. Um, one of the great things about it at the time was though, that you knew that you could go to any studio in the world and they were all over the world. Cause I was living in London at the time and you would be able to find a Bikram studio uh, in most major cities, you could find at least one and that they would be doing the exact same thing so that you knew you were going to get exactly the same workout, the exactly the, the Dharma talk, the little chat before the yoga class might be different. There might be some um, inspirational things that you might learn in a class, but basically the order of the poses was always, always the same. And that might sound like it become boring, but it didn't because of the work that you were, the internal work that you were doing at the same time. But that's for another day. The important part of the story here is I was doing a lot of Bikram yoga. I went to this yoga studio in New York City and there was this woman teaching who was amazing. And her first name was Lori. And if I can find her last name again, and I'm sure I've got it somewhere, I will post it because she's also a writer. And I would actually love to find and read more of her stuff because I, I just think she's wonderful. And I talk about this class a lot so what happened was we're in and, and if you've never been to a hot yoga class or a Bikram yoga class um, you know it's heated to like 90 degrees with 100 percent humidity so you're sweating like crazy you have sometimes you have two or three water bottles lined up and you might have a towel next to you because you're just you're just dripping when, when I would come out of there I would look like I'd had a shower and I could literally wring my yoga towel out it was really awful <laughs> anyway but it was a great workout anyway so she started talking at intervals during the class about becoming uncomfortable in the uncomfortable place. Because believe me, if there was ever an uncomfortable place, a hot, Bikram, a hot yoga class, a Bikram yoga class was it. You were hot. You sometimes felt like you were going to be sick. You, it hurt. You know, I mean, there was just everything about it was there was, there was, there were enough moments that were great that you kept coming back for more, but, but it, there was a lot of torture involved. I will just say that good tor good kind of torture. Anyway, um, character building, but there was a lot of uncomfortable moments. And then she began to ask us, she said, I want you to pay attention to when you go for that water bottle or when you go for the towel, when is it that you're doing that? Is it because you've become so uncomfortable in some way that you need to distract yourself by having a drink of water or grabbing the towel? Or do you really need that drink of water or that towel? And she said, I'm going to ask you to just wait a beat before you grab the towel or before you grab the water and make sure that you're not doing it because you're uncomfortable, that you're doing it because you really need it. And see if you can discipline yourself to do it at certain interval intervals or at certain parts of the class so that you can say to yourself, okay, I'm going to wait until we're at that stage where we shift from standing to seated poses and then 
that's when I'm going to, uh, to have a, a swig of water or half my bottle. So what was also interesting about her is when I began to, and she mentioned that she was a writer. She also mentioned, and I think she said in the class, that she had at one point in her life been an incredibly successful Broadway actress, and, or at least a successful Broadway actress, and also a writer, and that she had ended up as a homeless heroin addict prior to getting herself clean and then going to yoga instructor training and becoming a yoga instructor. So this woman knew what she was talking about when she was talking about being in an uncomfortable spot and reaching for something to distract you or to numb you um, for that moment, right? Because then that's all those distractions are. They just do it for the moment. And like a Bikram yoga class, right now, we find ourselves in a lot of uncomfortable spaces, okay? We are, we are, we are smack dab in the middle of some seriously uncomfortable space. And how that feels for you and, 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 and how that's playing out for you is gonna be different for all of us because of our different backgrounds and experiences and so on and so forth. But we're all in uncomfortable spaces of one thing or another, one kind or another. And so the question that I'm gonna ask you is, what is it that you reach for? You know, do you reach for food? Do you reach for alcohol? Do you reach for drugs? Do you reach for sex? And that could be porn, right? Do you gamble? Do you, what is it? Do you shop? Do you spend money? Do you make yourself busy? Do you dive into work, right? All of these things can be things that we do to distract ourselves when we're in an uncomfortable space. What do you do when you're in an uncomfortable space? How do you distract yourself, right? Now, I personally have been mostly a food distractor, okay? When I, I go for food, I, I'm definitely one of those people who was taking a nosedive into the Ben and Jerry's, you know, as a teenager when I, when I felt uncomfortable or unhappy or sad or depressed or anxious or whatever. It's kind of my go-to thing was, was ice cream or cake or cookies or bag of chips or bag of chips and dip or whatever, right? I certainly could have been someone who... Um, and have in the past certainly had, you know, maybe a couple too many drinks, you know, in certain situations. And I bring all this up because a part of the reason that it occurred to me to talk about this today was just as an, again, as an example from my own life and trying to keep it real for you guys. The last couple of days have been kind of ooky for me. I've just, I've, I've kind of hit a bad space for some reason. And in the interest of one being where I am, and realizing that I, I need to embrace the uncomfortable space in some way, which is another form of being comfortable in the uncomfortable space. Some of my old patterns were coming up, right? Things that I've been working on for a long time. And so last night, as I posted on, uh, on Facebook, I, uh, I had, and I love Carl Salater, thank you for this, darling. I had a three-way with Mr. Kirkland Prosecco and Ms. Cookie Dough, right? And at first I thought, oh God, look at me, you know, I'm, I'm drinking and I'm eating cookie dough and oh God, how, like, how far have I fallen? Like what, what, what business do I have talking to anybody about anxiety or dealing with it or whatever? Moment of doubt, right? And then I realized, hey, wait a second. It's important for people to know that even people who are doing this work and who do have a lot of tools you know, we have moments of doubt too. We struggle, we, you know, don't always get it right. And I wanna keep that real, you know? Um, I will say that one of the things that I can say about it is that there was a time where I would have eaten that whole pan of cookie dough, right? And instead I had a couple of bites of cookie dough, right? Or where I might've had that whole bottle of Prosecco, but instead I had two glasses of Prosecco. So I could see, oh, look at that. I have made progress, right? Over these many years that I've been doing this work that I can indulge a little bit in sort of the ghost of a pattern, right? What's hopefully the ghost of a pattern and, and not like go all the way off the deep end and not beat myself up forever. In fact, I can take this moment that I had and I can use it for good and I can use it for an illustration. And here's a further part of that illustration, and I'm getting back now to Bikram, right? So I don't know how many of you follow these things or whatever, but Bikram, along with a no number of gurus recently, and, and priests in the church and, you know, Boy Scout leaders and all these other people, has been um, uncovered as someone who 
maybe wasn't what he professed to be, right? And here's the word of caution, and this is one of the reasons I want to keep it real, right? Anyone, anyone who tells you that they have it all figured out, and they've got it, and they never doubt, and they never have a moment, and they don't get anxious, and they don't get down, they're lying, full stop. And if they're not lying, they're delusional. And believe you me, as someone who's been doing therapy for a while now, those people who claim to, or actually think, even more dangerous, that they have got it all figured out, those are going to be some of your most dangerous people. Because believe me, underneath that, there is something boiling that is going to bust at some point, And when it does, it's going to be ugly. And this includes somebody who maybe tells you that they've got it figured out financially and that if you go with them, they will save you and, and make everything perfect. Anybody that sells you something like that, anybody that tells you like that, something like that, they've got something to sell and something to hide, okay? So I would only, personally, I only ever want to work with people who, who mentors say, or take advice even from people um, or have a time for people who, who do keep it real and who say, you know what, I've got a lot of tools and I've made a lot of progress, but I don't have this figured out yet. You know, like I'm, I'm human. And so I do the human thing, you know, that's what we do. We're here to learn. So let's do it. Um, and coming back, circling back again to, um, to how to handle, to what to do about these things. So once you've won, begin to notice what is it that I go for? You know, what's my go-to distraction when I'm not feeling good, when I'm feeling uncomfortable, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling doubtful, whatever it is, right? You know, is it food? Is it drink? Is it drugs? Is it sex? Is it um, reaching out to a toxic person that, you know, you have a thing with? Is it gambling? Is it any, is it work? And, and really anything can be to you know, like you can make any, you can make the best thing in the world any of us can make the best thing in the world a, something that we're not using healthfully if we use it too much if we use it as a distraction if we never deal with whatever it is that's going on inside what's making us uncomfortable why are we uncomfortable why are we having difficulty being comfortable in this uncomfortable place and i'm not saying that's not going to happen and i'm not saying that you're not going to reach for the cookie dough and i'm not saying that you're not going to you know reach for maybe the porn, whatever. What I'm saying is that when you do, can you one, start to be conscious of it. That's the first step to, to, to figuring out what's going on with you. Be conscious that you're doing it. Make a conscious choice to do it, okay? And then try to do it a little bit less. Whether that's in terms of time, amount, you know, half the pint of Ben and Jerry's instead of the whole pint. 10 minutes of a video, an explicit video, you know, instead of hours, what is it, you know, what can you do? Can you, if, if you're, if, if gambling is your thing, can you do, you know, can you set a limit and say, okay, I'm only going to spend $50. And when I lose $50, I'm not, I'm not going anymore. Um, you know, what is it that you can back off of it, that you can do it until you get a handle on it. Right. But that it's not, to your detriment. And obviously some of these things are more dangerous, both to your person or to your financial person or whatever than other things, right? Or to your physical person. One pint of Ben and Jerry's is not gonna kill you, right? If that's a pattern, if it's something you're doing every day or every couple of days, that's potentially not gonna be good for you in the long run, right? So that's also part of this too, you know? Is this a once in a while thing that you're doing or is this a pattern that you engage in on a regular basis? And that's another thing to think about and to think about how to do that. And in that case, you may need help dealing with this if it's like become an addiction, right? But notice what it is that, what's your go-to thing? What's your go-to comfort? Can you do less of it? Can you be aware of when, what your triggers are, when and where it happens? And then can you eventually begin to just embrace being uncomfortable for a few minutes? Like... Lori said in this class, assuming that is her name, you know, can you just wait? Can you sit? Just sit for a minute, 30 seconds, longer, 
not just reacting again to whatever your trigger is and going, ah, oh, I'm going to send that text, right? That can also be part of it too. I'm going to send that text because that's going to make me feel better. But in the long run, then you're like, ah, eh, maybe I shouldn't send that text. Can you wait 30 seconds? Then can you wait a minute? Can you wait a minute and a half? And I, I, you know, we all got timers on our phones. We can use those. And that's another way to begin to, again, create that space where you can figure out what it is that makes you uncomfortable. Figure out what it is that you do to try to relieve that discomfort that may not be helpful, okay? And then what can you either replace it with or what can you do differently? Whether it's sitting with the issue or whether it's just embracing where you are and sitting with it or whether it's going and taking a walk or whether it's making yourself a cup of tea whatever it is try to shift in one of those ways and you can do this i know you can do this but it starts by noticing it okay so that's the first thing we have to do is we have to notice it and we have to notice what our go-to thing is what's our thing what do we reach for you know the water bottle the towel what is it that you reach for so that's what i have for today and i hope that you're all doing well um you know we're all gonna have our moments in these weeks and um i don't know how many days you guys are in you know i'm i'm in i think it's like 17 days now or something everybody's at slightly different numbers because different states you know did the stay-at-home order at different times anyway Embrace your moments as much as you can. Be where you are. Love yourself where you are. Don't be judgment. Oh, that's another point. Don't be judging yourself, okay? If you're having a down moment, if you're going for some cookie dough, really try not to judge yourself. I was being a little judgy on myself last night and I had to like kind of work through that a little bit. Try not to judge yourself. Just love yourself where you are. Go with it. Do what you can. That's all we can all do. Just love yourself because if you can't love yourself, you can't love anybody else, okay? All right. Big love to all of y'all. Thank you so much. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a note. Ciao.